Hey everyone, welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach. And today I'd like to talk just a few moments about some of the components of peace. I don't know about you, but I have started to have so many conversations about what peace really is with many people, some that are just sort of random conversations, and of course others that are more a direct inquiry. I'm so interested in knowing like what is peace to you? And beyond that, how do you cultivate peace? I think that these are really important things for us to be asking ourselves and particularly at this time. I've shared with you, of course, that September 21st is the International Day of Peace. And somehow we have to get from where we are to where we all want to be. And that is to be able to actually conceptualize peace once again. It almost seems like it is a foreign, a foreign term at the moment. And what has come, I think, most mm, powerfully into my into my understanding is that there are definite steps that each of us can take to cultivate that peace. So yesterday in my discussion with Donna Martini, we talked about judgment being an aspect of our relationships with ourselves and of course with others that has a direct impact. It actually robs us of our peace. It's impossible for anyone to be in a place of judgment and feel peaceful. The truth is, is that any judgment at all is actually a projection of judgment on the self. And so when we start to understand that these mechanisms are at play, we of course can start to cultivate more of the energy that could be used as an antidote, you might say. But one of the things that came up for me today, and it's particularly poignant because this used to be um, my wedding anniversary. So I was married for nearly 30 years. And um, when I decided to end our marriage, it resulted in a very acrimonious divorce. It was not one of those divorces where, you know, everybody plays nice and we all separate as friends. It was very difficult and so much of that difficulty was actually sort of revealed to me as time went on. But I remember going through that period and knowing that ultimately it was my responsibility to find some sense of peace and to regain the connection that was heart-based, that was going to be necessary in order for us to go forward always as a family. And so one of the things that I did was to place a photo of my former husband right above the sink in my kitchen. And I remember my friend saying to me, what is that all about? And I'm sure many people came into my kitchen and didn't even have the nerve to ask, they were probably afraid. But the truth was, is that I used to use that photo as a gauge to where I was in my heart on any particular day. Of course, days take us sort of up and down and kind of like a roller coaster, right? But I had this intention that I was going to do whatever I needed to do in order to regain what I felt that I had lost. So over time, I started to realize that the greatest factor that separated me from the peace that I was looking to achieve was that I hadn't yet forgiven myself for bringing an end to my marriage, for wanting a different life, for a different expression of myself. And when I started to understand so much of what I was projecting out 
I realized that that's what was preventing me from having any semblance of peace. And so my commitment to myself, to my family, became an even greater sense to what I wanted to achieve. In other words, now it really became a driving force. But I want you to know that commitment is absolutely necessary. You know, I spoke a moment ago about life being a roller coaster, and it really is. Except that if you are committed to maintaining a particular vibrational frequency, what happens is, is that you will begin to notice faster and faster when you're out of it. And this is what started to happen for me. In addition, I developed this ability to really be very aware as to what I was feeling, how I was reacting, and of course, choosing how I wanted to respond. Everything started to shift and I was able to regain some of that peace that I had lost. But peace is an energy, even though it's always there, always within us, always attainable, we need to feed it so that it continues to expand and to grow. And so my message to you today is, regardless of what you are experiencing right now, it is so essential that you do whatever you need to do to bring yourself back to peace. What that means is that even though you're not there entirely, try to resist judging yourself. Judgment, as we said, immediately separates you from what it is that you're looking to achieve. So we need to stay out of judgment of ourselves, even though we haven't yet achieved what we're working for. We need to stay committed to this process. This is something that I'm engaged in 24 seven. I am constantly checking in with myself to see, well, how am I feeling about that? What kind of reaction am I having? And is there a response that is accessible to me from the reaction that I am going to be happy with. Very quickly, you're going to learn how powerful this process is. And underneath it all is this constant requirement of self-forgiveness. And we're going to talk more and more and more about that. Of course, everything that I'm describing to you is actually self-love. We are learning to love ourselves in ways that perhaps we never have before because we're recognizing how essential, how important it is that we are showing up in our lives as securely as possible, anchored in to these energies that will keep us strong and yet flexible and resilient. That's what's being called for during these times. And that's what I'm working on. And it's my hope that through all of the conversations that we have, I can inspire you to do the same. Of course, if you have any questions or something comes up and you want to comment or maybe even just express that you are working in this direction, I want you to know that, of course, every comment and question is welcome and that I'm here because I know that this is possible for you. I know it's possible for me, and I know it's possible for all of us when we start to really work together. So, as promised also, I am here with my peace pledge. And again, I am offering this from my heart to yours. I pledge to expend, extend peace into my circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, taking personal responsibility and compassionate action. 
I take the peace pledge and I pass it on through my own peaceful heart to yours. By the way, if you would like a copy of that pledge, you can um, go to heartshiftcoach.com and it's right there on my, um, on my front page. Also, I've put together a guide for you and it's seven ways to cultivate peace. And I think you're going to find that it's very beneficial. So until tomorrow, I'm leaving you, of course, with my peaceful heart, feeding your peaceful heart, and together we feed peace. So peace in, peace in, and peace out. Back to you. Okay. Until tomorrow. Bye-bye.